Good evening. I'd like to call the Monday, November 21st, 2022, Town of Berlin Select Board regularly scheduled meeting to order. Uh, to my left is Flo Smith. My far left is Joe Staub. To my right is Carl Parton. And to my far right, Dave Sawyer. I'm Brad Town. Uh, Vince Connie, our town administrator, is here, along with Diane Isabel, town treasurer. Um, additions and changes to the agenda. There is. There's two additions to the agenda tonight. Uh, one is the uh, fire department presentation request, and Mr. Roma is here for that. And there is a uh, catering request permit um, that came in. Uh, Rachel's asked me to to, give, to present tonight. And just want to alert you, it's it's a new format now. It's all done online. We get these. Uh, just you can review them. Um, and the the approval via minutes will be acceptable. There there isn't anything to sign. That's uh, that's what they're going to start looking like. So it tells you the business, what's it what it's for, where it's at. It's Capital City Grange. It's a private birthday party on December. Yep. Ten. Okay. Um. And this is the estimate? Uh, yes, that so is. So there's a third? I don't know what it is with that estimate. I don't know. I've been trying to get this on since August. I did send it out. You did. I didn't Thank get you. it on here. So there is a third. And that's the review of the uh, fire department's request of their radio budget. <laughs> or they, radio proposal. Any okay. uh, public comment? Hearing none, um, right of way permit. Yeah, I thought Mr. Legue was going to be here, but we have Mr. Lamberton instead. This is, he's uh, working down behind the state police barracks at that property there, and he's going to go from two accesses down to one. There's water and sewer already there. Um, and I'll, I'll let him explain the details, but he's basically may not even be working in the right of way. It's just a precaution on, on their part. I don't know how wide the right of way is there. Um, the sewer and water stubs are out of the right of way. My understanding when we had installed them, and we're uh, there's one abandoned uh, curb cut where the third house on the south side used to be, and then there's a there's a curb cut for the field. Yep. And I got uh, the road commissioner down there a couple months ago and looked at it with him, and we've. We agreed that if we moved one curb cut further south, it would be safer because there's kind of a corner down there. <clears throat> so we're asking to eliminate a curb cut, move the one that we have a little further south. We <clears throat> we've been on probably two years getting a permit to build this road because it has to go through the wetlands, and we have an Army Corps permit, we have a wetlands permit, and we have a stormwater permit to build this road. The only way we can get sewer water and power to that field is to build it in the road. So that's all part of this project. So it's gonna cost me $80,000. I figured 10% might be in the right of way. We don't know where the right of way is, yeah. but the sewer and water and power will all be outside of the right of way as it's been left already. Um, the only work probably in the right of way is gonna be the stone uh, construction entrance to go onto the pavement. So you're not you're not even sure that this is going to be in the town right. I don't know where the right of way ends there. I know where the it's got a really wide paved shoulder. Yeah. We're not getting into the paper. Yeah. The sewer and water stubs were left with stakes when they were put in when the sewer and water was built. And I my understanding was that when it was put in, it was put in outside of the town's right of way, the stub, the end of the stub. Okay. So we're connecting onto those. That would mean we're not in the town right away. But as you know, you have to dig back four feet further than the end of the stub. So maybe we are. Yeah. So I, I paid eight hundred dollars in a fee so that no one could go by and say I was working in the right away without a permit. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for Wayne? Your motion. Make a motion for the <laughs> Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, Thank you. Thank you. you. Yep. 
in this segment. Stroll from this segment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, planning grants for the loop to the budget. So, uh, I believe the, the Select Board is interested in pursuing a municipal state planning grant to do a, a study on the uh, feasibility of town assets and, and properties. You may recall that uh, the Select Board two times have applied for this grant and was denied by the state. Does the town had other municipal planning grants in the in the hopper, uh, uh, but we don't now. The town doesn't have now. So uh, Vince suggested that we pursue a uh, request for planning grant. It's a budget it's a project budget of forty thousand uh, dollars. Twenty two thousand dollars comes from from the grant, and the balance would have to come from from the select board. It's, it's, uh, and the applications are due December 1st of, of this year. And you, you have a copy of that in your package as well. Was Carla coming to talk about the revolution? No, okay. But she signed it. She did, yeah. They had the copy in the folder to sign. The resolution is in there as well. The planning commission met in. in Gave their blessing on it for the select board. That means that the for this study we'd have to come up thirteen thousand. Correct. Is it eighteen thousand? Sorry, I'm not the treasurer. What's well, because if it's twenty two for the grant, then we'd have to come up eighteen because it's forty thousand and yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Any discussion on this? What's this study supposed to do for us? Well, in the past, uh, it looks at your existing infrastructure buildings. It looks at uh, snapshot in the future 20 year outlook on, on where the town is going to go and assesses what you have and what your needs are. And it's a planning tool then for the select board to look at the economics, if you're going to replace something, what that's going to cost, and how best to fund those uh, fund those projects. Now, would this get into like um, whether or not we need another well or anything like that? No, no so that's different. Oh, this yeah. is just for buildings, town, for real estate, garage, and the state. Yeah. Yeah. Your motion. There's no other questions. You said just buildings. Sure, yeah. correct. I got a question. Where would this money come out of? What would it be? The eighteen thousand that be the town's portion. Again, four favorite letters. ARPA is available. I'm going to give you a, a brief on where we're at with, with the ARPA funds. Where we're are we for the budget review on that yeah. as well? Okay. When when do the offer funds have to be used by? They have to be obligated by 2024, the end of the fiscal year of 2024. I'll double check this again to make sure, but spent by 2026. What do you have left in that? <laughs> I'm gonna talk about that. that during the budget. Okay, I'll give you I'll give you a document on that. But right now we have a balance of between what's spent and what's currently obligated of six zero three five sixty nine is the balance. Your motion. I don't have a clear understanding. And I prefer to wait. You know, it's a short time frame, and you know, we haven't looked at the budget and 
a full review of the ARPA funds. I think it would be premature to just say we're going to use those funds for this quick juncture. I move that we uh, table the planning grant resolution budget vote for future. Well, the only be, thing is, it has to be in by like December uh, 1 if we're going to go forward with it. But. So, why don't we just take and postpone it until after the Vince's explanation of the ARPA plan? So, later in the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Um, excuse me, Brad. I, what you, uh, I think if the select board would always have the opportunity. To if a grant was awarded, to not accept it. So, um, if if that helps your discussion in the future, yeah. to, to make a decision. Okay. Um, let's see, well, the entire collection decision discussion. Yeah, that one is on there. Um, as you know, we've got several, a um, couple hundred tires at least on the yard. I just keep collecting. We've picked up over the years, green up day and drop off on next to the road and so on and so forth. We've got quite a pile. There's nobody locally that will take them at any reasonable cost to get rid of them. So there's there's a couple of large companies in New England, one in Mass, one in Maine, um, that I've contacted. Lo and behold, now they're one company. The one in Maine bought the one in Mass. Um, and they need a minimum to come pick up of between six and seven hundred tires. Um, so the thought was maybe this spring, just before and around green up day and tire changeover, we do a town wide free drop off rather than picking them up on the side of the road like we do during green up day to see if we can get enough tires to get them to come down and pick them up and haul them off. It's going to cost twenty five hundred bucks for between six and seven hundred tires for them to come down from Maine, load them up, and take them away. That's do, the intent of this. We do have five thousand dollars in the budget. Correct. For the cleanup, for the for the part of the cleanup out there, and again, you'll see that that's in there again this year as well. This year's budget proposal to clean that up because we've got our little crash area out behind the stone piles too that we're putting together, pulling out the steel and all that. That'll go to bull docks and then the other stuff to dispose of. As well. So, excuse me, Vince. Uh, you. You may know that Town Fair Tire was recently opened when they were going through their um, DRB hearing on it. It, it was uh, requested of them that they consider taking town tires. Uh, they don't want 600 at a time. Uh, um, <laughs> but now that they're open, they just opened last week. Maybe in a position where we start taking them. I'll, I'll call the manager and remind them promise to that end and maybe that could solve this issue yeah I mean, that's that's better than paying if we can yeah that sounds wonderful take them yeah it's like a little high at 700 tie it's like 350 i've been here somewhere around two two and a quarter to 250. tire seems a little high but... trucking fees so okay too yeah it seems to me there was a local company that was picking up for I, I I checked with a few and I even called Casella and, and this is who they're using and who they're recommending. They're saying they got no place else to get rid of them either, uh, locally anymore. So we'll have to take and um, wait on that one until after we. Yeah, I'll, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll check with Town Fair and see what we can do there. How many tires do we have out there? I'm saying somewhere between 200 and 250 at least. Um, Tim thinks we're closer to 400, but yeah. Has there been an ad put in like front page forum or, you know, anything that maybe places that you wouldn't think to ask, that maybe someone might be interested, farmer, someone no, I that you didn't not, think I haven't done that. I'm just my concern with that is farmers and things, and then what's the liability behind that, right? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, we unload mm -hmm. several hundred tires somewhere. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, if you advertise it, or even if you were to offer it as a service to the town, the uh, volume is not guaranteed. 
You could have six hundred, you got six thousand. Right. Right. So I'll postpone that till uh yep. to uh reschedule next meeting. So, second. Okay. Um, preliminary budget discussion events. Yes. Okay. So last week I I provided you with all the uh, budget information so you could prepare all your questions and concerns and and such. So again, the first the first draft. Don't let the numbers scare you too much, but it it shows an average proposed increase of about twenty percent as it as it stands right now. Some of the uh, bigger contributors to that uh, salaries, of course, the new hires, the. Um, Insurances are up by almost uh, 30%. It's 29%, right, Diane? Um, so I'm, I don't have the, I don't yeah. have the numbers yet. Yeah. I'm anticipating we will have an increase. But I should have those sometime early December from the least cities and towns. Uh, the other one that we have, and I think uh, Tom might want to speak to this one a little bit, is the, let me look at the exact number on that one. The boards and commissions yeah, there's somewhere here and i'm again i'm hitting hitting the bigger ones the um we included in that number uh so it's, it makes it look a little bit higher right is the on the other boards and commissions we put in the public works board as a request for sixty thousand in their budget and then, and Tom is here to speak on what that is kind of targeted for as well. If you'd like him to explain that, I'm sure. Yeah. Go ahead. So uh, I think I saw in your packets uh, put together a uh, yep a narrative. They have this both of these from the uh, town plan, and e economic development is a, is a key function of of the town of Berlin. So uh, I'd just like to read to you from the, our economic development section in the town plan, and it's the highlighted pieces. The highlight is, is what I've added. So uh, under objectives, the number one objective of under, under economic development is to focus commercial and industrial growth in the northeast uh, northeast quadrant. And this northeast quadrant is, is the area we're in now. It's the new town center. It's the hospital in, in that area. So that's, that's the number one objective. The, second, the fifth objective there uh, is maintain a balanced tax, tax base uh, that generates the revenue necessary to provide municipal services without unduly uh, without overburdening property owners. And so those are the two objectives uh, uh, in the in the town plan. The, the first policy there is ensure that the that town government supports economic development, maintains a strong relationship with the town's business community, and assists business growth and development. And then under actions, the third action there is continue to extend municipal water and sewer in the northeast quadrant to support future economic development in a manner consistent with the smart growth principles as defined in the state and the final piece i want to read is just on the right hand column is, is infrastructure improvements berlin's economic success is dependent on uh, the uh, provision of high quality infrastructure the town is actively working to provide water and sewer to support future growth in the northeast quadrant of the town. So this is the uh, um, water and sewer are key contributors to economic development. Uh, I I think I been off to share to you the, the achievements that the Public Works Board has 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 done um, uh, since 2015. There's 
10 plus achievements. All of this has, has been uh, accomplished through rate payers, contribution to, to the systems, and the, the town has not participated uh, uh, in, in any of those activities. So you can see what they are. I can ask the questions, of, uh, the questions. And the final piece that you, you don't have, and I, I'll hand it out here, is you, you likely know that Berlin's most recent grand list is $507 million. The, um, of that, there are 1,489 parcels that make up that grand list. The uh, number of parcels that are connected to water and sewer are uh, 369, just 25% of the parcels. The, as I say, the, the grand list is $507 million. The, those 369 parcels represent well, on the grand list uh, $294 million or 58% of the grand list. So 25% of the parcels are making up 58% of the grand list. Uh, and so I'm that copy this for you guys. Uh, so uh, the, the water and sewer are are key contributors to the economic viability of our town. Um, uh, and there are numerous projects that need to, to uh, occur to create, to continue to allow the economic development activity to, to proceed. Uh, the public work board would like the select board to consider adding uh, an annual uh, line item budget of $60,000. That represents, depending on interest rates, about uh, a million to a million two hundred fifty thousand dollars of debt. Uh, and that would cover the that, uh, the debt service on million million and quarter of, of debt. Uh, I, I, uh, to that end, the the um, uh, public work board really believes that the that the parcels that are connected now are contributing more than their share to the the grand list. And hopefully that you uh, folks can, can give this consideration and and um, help. Help move the town forward. So I'll take questions, or, or you know, you could. I don't expect a decision tonight, but I we wanted to come here and just talk to you about that and, and the the need for um, uh, looking for some some help from the town to help with the economic development piece of what's the water and sewer infrastructure. How is the economic development committee doing? <laughs> Should have asked that when Wayne was here. <laughs> um, they haven't started meeting yet, and there's still only th three members um, right now that have agreed to to sit on it. We're looking for for two more members as well. Um, along with that grant that uh, Tom mentioned earlier, uh, I have talked to Wayne. I have not been able to reach uh, Roberta yet, but she's to the second of the third members on there about also uh, when we talked before about a board or commission, right? Looking at our facilities and uh, the growth over the next five, 10 and 20 years, um, what those needs are and come up with some recommendations as well. And Wayne has agreed uh, to sit on that board or commission or do it through the economic development committee. If we can get you know two more members that are willing to be on there, they're, He's willing to, you know, talk about taking that on, and uh, with that, with that board, as well. Tom, um, so that grant that you're applying, you'd like to apply for, that is going to be part of this uh, uh, thing. What we need here for the town offices and all. Oh, correct. Right. That's correct. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The forty thousand dollar one that we discussed. Yeah, earlier. that's correct. Yeah. So that would be a tool for the development, the uh, 
Yeah. Need them to you to use as well. Yeah. They're in would be in alignment at that point. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So then, then there's the general expenses. Obviously, like everything, the cost is going up generally. So if you look at that, that's page twenty one. Um, you'll see. I won't read them all off, but you know, there's a fairly significant increase in, in those costs as well. You know, like our audit services, our legal services, our payroll services, all those, they've gone up. Uh, it's general services. And then the other more significant one is in the, the, the capital budget as well. If you look at that one, you'll see the substantial, not substantial, but a big increase. If you remember last year, um, those of you that were on the board, we had a uh, reduction in the capital budget. You know, we started to do a little bit more planning. We put money in there so we wouldn't have to take out loans for equipment and things, kind of a five or seven year plan, really, um, to have uh, funds there when we want to purchase, you know, highway equipment, vehicles, um, uh, loaders, graders, those big ticket items. We cut that a little bit last year um, by about 100000 out of the capital. So that went back in again this year um, to cover that. Not an additional, but back to those original numbers that we took out last year. So we went from, you know, back up to 300000 and 250000 in that budget as well. Um, there is, a, again, in the budget, we increase the uh, police equipment for the two vehicles as well. It went from 45 last year to 100 this year for the cost of two vehicles. Um, so that's that's what's driven the capital budget up um, as significantly as it as it has. And the zoning enforcement officer, is that still like a pipe that, train? That's, yeah, that's, that's in there, um, you know, part-time. Mm -hmm. um, that is in the budget. So under the under the salaries and overall, um, that's still there. I think it was uh, the salary was I think ended up being around twenty six thousand for that position. Well, that's kind of the overall you know summary of where a lot of the majors is, is coming from. Some of the difficulty in looking at the capital budget is, as we know, the local option tax didn't pass Did not by pass. a very small Correct. margin. How soon can we get that back on the ballot to be yeah. voted for again? Mm -hmm. I mean, it was so close. We can, yeah, before we go to vote again, I think we need to, I need to come up with some thoughts on how to get more information out there, educate the residents what it really means. Cause again, when they see tax, they think it's coming out of their pocket mm -hmm. um, every, every time they go. And, f and like food tax on food, it's not on groceries. Right. And so, right. you know, doesn't apply to vehicle purchases, purchases groceries. Exactly. So I think I got to do some sort of, I don't want to say media blitz, but something put together to put information mm -hmm. out there um, to, to spread the word and educate a little bit more. Um, and then, and then think about getting it on the ballot again. On a positive note, the town is really growing and expanding and the future is bright. Yeah. It just comes on the hard times. Growing you know, pains. Growing, growing pains, pains, pains is a good way of putting it. So this 60,000 that is asked for the public works, that's, that's an annual, annual thing he wants the town to contribute to the public works board. My question was, is the Public Works Board has been self-supporting through the water and the sewer. And we just added a position to that department, like a hundred thousand. Where where do they what do they annually would gross or net after all their expenses on the annual? How much is there some kind of there's gotta be some kind of figure on that? Yeah, off the top of my head. I can't think of that, but they usually, thinking last year, they had a, a surplus. Yeah. Of, I think like for 100000 100000 I believe. Yeah, water did not, because water is 
not at a break-even point. Sure, yet. sure. Okay, but the sewer did. Is. But the, the two combined, they, they, I mean, even if the water's not at a, at a break-even, um, I'm wondering what that surplus is, the two combined that, that, that runs that public works board. And, and what kind of, you know, we just added a position that it's 100. 110,000 or something. 121 all in. 121 salary and benefits. All benefit salary. Yeah. And benefits. I'm just curious where the surplus number would be, you know, between the two. The town starts contributing $60,000 to it. Anyway. So, is your question, uh, as I hear it, uh, is the amount of the salary taken away from what would have been used to? Um, help with expansion of the water and sewer that we are now adding the sixty thousand for is that well, kind of in my mind yeah I'm looking at it saying we added a hundred thousand dollar position to that I'm just wondering what kind of surplus after that was added how much money they got left over uh, annually yeah, yeah there's a couple ways to look at it too because we've got we're also paying well, two I contractors. Know, we got two contracts right. we're, we're going to reduce we're going to reduce we'll, we'll cover that some of that portion but, i understand know, that but at, i'm just at I'm the just end of the day the surplus should remain about what it is today once those contractors are are out of the picture as well right which is just the water alone was a hundred and no water sewer, sewer, sewer. sorry yeah. yeah yeah last year and i'm just talking off the top of my head. sure sure I, i'm just i think that would be a surplus last year yeah. but part of it for the surplus last year and the year before is that Montpelier, we had budgeted a certain amount for, uh, oh, that's for right. the, what do you call it, waste treatment. Yep. And we got some money back on that, a significant right. amount. So that really did help us. Yeah, I guess we kind of helped to make a decision for whether we want to try to put 60000 into it is yeah. to know how much they've got in surplus. Yeah. I, we I, know, I or a portion yeah. of that. Uh, I can bring that next week, if you don't mind. That we can have a detail. My question about the, is that a residual surplus or a yearly surplus? Like, is that the surplus they have? It's not going to have it. That, that was related it. over years, or is that just one? No, that was just that year. one year. Just one, one year. Yeah. But there were extenuating circumstances in that. that we won't see it every year, but we took advantage of it. Uh, however, I think the next meeting, I will just bring the report Martin. from last, um, last year's the audit report, because that would give accurate numbers. Yeah, it'd be nice to have it over you know, a couple of years just to look at what the average is. Just to yeah, see what makes uh, perfect sense. Sell. Yeah, I'll grab those off. Other questions? Comments? How would Thoughts? it affect them? I guess one question that I have is. How would it affect them if we didn't contribute the sixty thousand, based on what was presented to us this evening by Tom? Yeah. Uh, again, I think my, my understanding of that is looking that, looking at that for loan leverage to expand the system. Right. So if he doesn't have that. They would certainly have to scale down um, their rate of planned expansion. Thank you. Where were they? Where have they been expanding to? That's uh, that's a question we'd have to ask them because I I didn't get into the details of where they thought that would be. On the other so time, I can find out what their what their thinking is. You know what what is their five year plan look like? Right. Yeah, I was wondering if they were thinking of blowing up Stewart Road or anything like that. Were they not talking about Scott now? Not long ago. That's a good one. Yeah. Well, the other thing with the expansion too, the revenues increase in that too because of your connections and everything. Well, I think also the other the other big one that may be driving some of this is right the connection to the hospital and putting in a redundant line when they do that as well, um, because right now there is no redundancy in the in the system. Well, I think that's a that's one of the the big ones that they're, they're thinking about short term, short term, next couple of years type of thing. Is there an anticipated date for the connection to the hospital? No. no. Nothing. Nothing's discussed. finalized there. And I think Tom, Tom also said that that was going to be paying off the interest of the debt. $60,000. I 
Right. See, I didn't fully understand what it was. That's all. Yes, I think he's talking account. about the proposed debt, right? The proposed, the proposed debt. debt. Correct. The interest yeah. yeah. I think he's looking at annual payments against maybe a bond. Yeah. Okay. That's a good way to put it. That, that's yeah. exactly yeah. what it is. Worth of bonding. Yeah. Anything more of it? Unless there's questions or more information that you want on certain areas or other details. Um, well, this is only the first round. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. It's it's the first round, so. Mm -hmm. So the, the telephone, I was looking at all different areas have their own allotment for telephone. We have a new telephone system, right? No, we have one coming after the first of the year. Okay. The one integrated phone system with the building, the police, the garage. Yeah. Yes. Okay. What's the cap tab? C A P T A P. Uh, what page you State are? licensing. Page eleven. It's under assessing. It's under assessing it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that is the piece. We have a program in Grand Lists that's called CAM. And in that program, which is run a lot by the state, okay, there are fees in order for them to be able to tap into that information from the state, and the state reviews it because they have a way of getting into our program. So there are fees that are fixed fees. I think it's at least $600. And I think there's another kind of fee too for assessors, yeah. but it goes along with a program that Grand Lift called CAMA. And Thank we you. have to have it. Thank you. Yeah. You readed some things out here, Vince, on uh, page 20 under town offices, uh, equipment contracts and the internet. So more than doubled. Yeah. Um, some of that is how we kind of put the budget together this year as well. But we have things like, um, uh, let me look at which one. I want to talk about equipment contracts, right? That went up a lot. So there are, that's the list I was looking for that you had given me with all the uh, contracts on it. But again, there were, there were increases in those. We have contracts for things like the copier. Um, we have contracts for uh, the mowing. We have contracts for the roadside mowing. But the roadside line goes in a different year. It goes in a... It, you, had a you had a breakdown list, and I... I think I gave it to you. Well, that's what I was looking for. I, I thought I had it in here, but it's it's so not. New, new phone system. Uh, we have that. We have... But that's... Uh, I would put the trailer in there, the trailer bench. Uh, yeah, miles. that was 11 of it. Yeah, okay. and there's... Uh, so we have a breakdown. We have a breakdown list. I, I don't know where I put it. To be quite frank, I thought it was in the... My budget folder, but it's not here. And I will send that out as well of what's included in that. On the web page, I can understand it having gone up for 2023, but for 2024, that's a, why would it stay? It's a standard yearly rate for the new web site that we have because that web comes with, unlike the other one where we didn't even have admin rights and couldn't do anything really with it. Plus, it was very hard to do anything with anyway. This new one, we, we have the access. We also have a website manager um, that will assist us if, and give us thoughts and ideas on uh, how to make it better. Um, they mm -hmm. usually talk with them once a quarter uh, to see how it's going. And so we get, we get service to the website now that we didn't get before as well. That's included in that. That's part of why it's more, but that's a yearly fee of $4,900 with them, Squarespace. Is the web service that we use now? Thank you. That's how to do about getting money going out. Yeah, out of the search results. Yeah. What was the other one, Carl? You wanted some information on? Just about that six thousand internet. We also had that in red, so caught my eye. Ah, uh, yeah, you and your color. <laughs> six thousand. We just got it. July nine is it? Internet. Okay. Yep. Uh, so in that one, uh, we have our internet service provider is in there. Did we put, is polymorphic in that polymorphic's one? Polymorphic's in the contracts. They're, they're in the contracts, right? Uh, what else did we have in there? Squarespace, we don't. 
No, Squarespace should not be in that one. They're separately on the web page. Well, part is Comcast. Comcast. That's what, yeah. what I was going to think of. And Comcast is, uh, we have, what, three different bills we get from them? Yeah. And they've increased their rates. Yep. Significantly. And on page 14 under zoning, the increase on telephone for 2024. That's the new contract for the new phone system, I believe, in that one. Oh, no, on zoning? Under zoning. On page 14, it uh, had 1,220.2. Oh, that's, yeah, that's just the, the, the rate, basically, of, of our, our phone provider going up as well. That's, I guess I would call it. My old life, I'd call that the cost of doing business. And those guys all go up on you. Admin software support, Farrell. Is that the next one that you had mentioned? That one up to 15? Okay. Another page 13, and we're looking and, and 13. something you can't do anything about necessarily um, <laughs> when you look at health insurance. Yes. Uh, but that is a $240,000 increase from 23 to 24, by my math. My um, I think that's something to keep in mind. That is. Uh, an extreme value added and an increased benefit when we're when we're discussing uh, payroll and increases. And so that's something to think about. Um, I'm not sure what that is per individual here at the town office, but if we have 20 people, that's or 24 people, that's a ten thousand dollar increase in salary and benefits that we're. Uh, on the health insurance. Yes. Yes. Yeah, absolutely it is. So question on the health insurance. Do we have multiple plans to choose from? Two. We have two. We do have two. Um, there's one that has offers more um, coverage. Okay. It has less deductibles. Um, and we've got our insurance does not have high deductibles. Okay. But there is one that just offers a little bit more benefits. And most of the police department tends to get on that one. And they have to pay the difference. Well, the, the town will pay a certain amount, and if you get the other insurance, then you have to pay the difference between what the town, what the town pays and what this other insurance costs. Yeah. And the, we do have quite a few. Well, not quite a few, but we have a few people. The basic plan is 100% paid by the town. And then if you want the supplemental plan or the next level up plan, you pay the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Town gives great insurance. Yeah. On the basic plan for the families. On the basic plan, yes. It will. And then again, if you want, as Diane said, a lower deductible and a bit better coverage, then you pay the difference. Is that also offered to part timers? Okay, you have to do 40 hours a week. Full time. Uh, I think the last page, I think I included that in yours, also is uh, of interest, will be of interest. Um, it's page 30. It's the, the wage proposal as well. And again, what I used was a straight 8% to match the uh, inflation. inflation rate. So you'll see where it was and where that 8% brings everything. So that one will be of interest to, to take a look at. And of course the police is by the union contract. Yeah, that, that one's a done deal with the union contract side so those are pretty well set for the next four years three years
Any other questions from Lance or anything else? Any, anything I, that you want as as far as additional details? I've, I've got those that you had asked for, Carl, as well, and I'll, I'll get those out to you this week. I'll put those together um, so you can look at it in a little more depth in certain areas. I, I would ask, uh, as a first year board member, I would ask Brad and Clay and Dave. Uh, more of a procedural question. How do we discuss? How do we you know, decide, make the decision uh, going forward on, on the line items or and how in the past has an item been brought up, increased or decreased within the budget? How does it work? Well, usually we take and uh, go through the budget. Uh, we will take and uh, uh, Change the line, on it, line items and, and, uh, as a group. And then at the end, we just go for the budget. We put four to the okay. And what's our timeline for looking at that in case we. Uh, is it, is it, for, it for February? Fun. February? You have to everything into the town clerk by February? No, I think it's before that. Yeah. Like a little before that. Yeah, I think, it's, uh, I think it's the end of January. I had to have it in last year. 2026, 20, was it? 23rd, 23rd, I think it was last year. Yeah, I think it was the 23rd. That sounds about right. Yeah. Of, of January so have, last year. So we have four or five meetings to discuss the budget and to come to our consensus. Yeah. On the, on the that However, in the time past, we've had, had that stuff in the budget religiously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think we had two last year, I think. Yeah. year before that, uh, when uh, Tom and uh, Dana were here, we Nothing to have five or six. We did it every week. Yeah. And you just tackle sections of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah typically, what I'll start doing um, is at the next budget review, I'll have Tim come in. So we talk about the highway budget. And then at the next one, I'll have the chief come in. We can talk about the police budget with him. Um, and they can give their a little bit more specific. Yeah, this is just an only yeah. and get, they can get into more details there. And at that point, we ask questions and a lot of times, you know, give our yays and nays to certain things that are being proposed to us. And we look at percentages and where we want the budget to end up and how that will affect the residents and whether we can maintain as opposed to you know, drastic increases. But as we know, everything's getting more expensive than ever. And that's why I mentioned, like, you know, had the local option tax passed, that would have helped us a lot. Made a it would have made a significant digit difference on the capital budget. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would have reduced our overall down to about, uh, well, the capital budget would have reduced down to about 5%. So let me know when you're planning on the fire department coming in so I can schedule a vacation. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Any other questions for Vince on this? If you think of any, send me a note too, and I'll get the information out to you and the rest of the board as well. You know, if you're going through it and a question pops up, don't hesitate to send it to me. And I'll, uh, I'll get the details out there. Well, some of my questions would be just just for to educate myself of what these um, count names are. All the count names. So I don't know. We do. We could build it. Probably build a cheat sheet for that of something some sort like that, and kind of put them out there. What's in each. I don't know, it's in each one of the major ones or something. I think we'll look at that. I like when we talk about everything further. You know, for example, on page 11, the tax maps in 2022, 2500, 23, 2500, and then going down to 2000, you know, things like that. It just uh, helps understanding where the rise and the decrease. And, you know, so we have a real clear understanding. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But the tax map, maps, especially, I think we always over budget it. And finally, we said, well, realistically, we've never come about this. Thing. Yeah, we've looked at the last couple of years of what's been spent in some of these, and we never reached the budget goal. So, you know, to Diane's point, why would we keep budgeting, you know, $1,000 over? And sometimes you can't anticipate it. what's going to happen, like what happened with our fees for auditing. You know, right. that was a huge increase. And sometimes you just have to swallow hard and move forward. Yeah. You know, and we get great service. Yeah, you'll see, you'll see an increase in the highway when we go through that. You'll see fuel costs. Mm -hmm. so that's, right. There's a few things that we don't have a lot of control over, but need to have. 
And then uh, oh, I'll let you, uh, if, if you're done with this, I'm happy to present the ARPA as well. If you want to just quickly have an overview of that. I tried to print it as small as I could, but I did put a lot of color in it. For some of them. Okay. Question, does the color pop more? <laughs> a little bit, but we put it in the budget, so. <laughs> No, not yet. I didn't have the code, but we'll put it in there. Um, the top part is is a little more detail, and it's kind of color coded to tell you what's what's done, what's obligated, and what was out there for discussion at the time. But the real summary is at the bottom, and the box is at the bottom. Um, so you can see that we received eight hundred and thirty one, three hundred fifty eight thousand dollars and thirteen cents in ARPA funds. So those are the four payments that we've received. What we've paid is in the top box on the right. It says paid as of November. Um, and it tells you where we spent those funds. So we've spent 55,953.22 to date. And then we have obligated below that things that we've approved for ARPA uh, payments right now. Um, can you remind me what the retention funds were for again? For 9,000? Yeah, that, the retention funds, the highway gas. Well, that's right. That's, those are the retention payments yep. that we authorize for the highway crew. I'm going to write that down so I don't forget it again. Um, and then we've obligated the radio funds for the new radios for the highway and the police. We put the, um, the assistant treasurer in there as well. We do need to add her, her benefits into that. Yeah, that is not a fully loaded amount. That's just her salary that's in there. And then the balance that's uh, owed on the uh, Lister's office trailer. So those are the obligated funds that come to 188,835.16 that we have obligated, leaving us a balance of 603.569 in ARPA funds that are not obligated and not spent yet. When there's 18 that he was looking for on the, for the grant portion for that, for the, the, uh, no, the planning grant? Planning grant. Yeah, that's not in that, here yet. But, but that does qualify. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the summary for you on, on our funds as well going forward. So you'll have that. If there any questions on that one? Joe, you're thinking of one, I can tell. Well, Tom's requesting, what was that, 18,000? For the planning grant. planning grant. Yeah. And then just, I didn't print out multiple copies of this, but I, again, just for whatever it's worth, just to kind of put some things in perspective as well. I went through, there were 170 municipalities that reported into the uh, VLCT on the salary reports and surveys and things. So I, I kind of sorted it out in, in uh, four different ways to give you an idea of where Berlin sits among all, of, all the towns that did participate in the survey. So for example, um, if you look at the percentage of their operating budget, we're 36 out of the 170 that report. So we're the 36th lowest, not lowest, but from the top. Out of 136 out of 170. I think we're 45 percent of our operating expenses or our overall budget is in the top salaries. Yeah. Yeah. And then for uh you know, the operating budget is 29. That's the that's 20, we're 29 out of 170, excuse me. No, I'm just I'm not that wrong again. Operating budget, there's 29. The population, we're 46 out of 170. And then uh, overall, you know, we're at, uh, this one's just, this is the, just the overall here. 
that one is the one that's 35, and that's actually the category I got highlighted here. Operating budget, yeah, is right. Okay. That could be my own schoolwork here. But that'll give you some idea of how we compare to other towns within our own population, with our own population size um, and some of our own demographics. You know, you can look through and look at the hospital towns and see how we compare to them as well. And if, you, if you're looking at that and you want it sorted any other way to see where we are, let me know. Again, I can, I can pull it up and, and do that um, so you can see where we stand. Or if you just want to pick out a handful of towns to see how we compare to those, you send me the list and I can, I can sort it by that as well and give you that just to, just to help you see how, where we stand in comparison. Again, it's 170 of the towns across the state that did complete the survey for the leagues of cities and towns. So 80 of them didn't, or 80, 80 well, whatever it is, didn't, didn't yeah, do that. Be, I think there's 251 towns. So I think it's, yeah, 251 or 253, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and again, the benefit, it takes us a little bit of time. Diane, I do part of the survey. Diane does part of the survey. Probably she does probably the bigger portion because yes, they're I looking the for portion. <laughs> and um, the benefit we get is we get this report free. Uh, the towns that don't participate, if they want it, it's like a hundred bucks uh, for them to purchase the report. So would you, how would you how would you take and rank rank us? Are we favorable so far? Um, I, I think what stood out most to me was where we stood based on the uh salaries percentage right it was a little higher than what i anticipated what i thought it would be comparatively um but that's the one that stood out to me the, the most I, I don't think you know when you take again uh, are you, are you know i think salaries or wages 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 overall wages sorry i use salary it's, so it's kind of hard to, so so the higher if if people are working overtime you get you Excuse your it, it excuse your figure, yeah. Right. Yeah, the other thing too is is, is this is just um, you don't know how many employees it is just look at this for a Correct. Time. You, I mean you, you don't you, you have to go really into the details of the to, report. Yeah, you know, yeah, really there's, there's a lot of variables you have to look at and consider in that. Um and again, th to me the big difference is you can't when I look at it, I can't compare us to towns of the same population size. No, because we're we're Demographically, we're not anything like those, you know, those smaller towns. They don't have the, you know, the infrastructure that, that we have with the the malls and the hospitals and those those things. So you know, it makes a big were, difference. Yeah, because if you were to take that looking at looking at salary wise, I mean, they don't have police departments. I mean and that's a big but, one. Well, yes, yeah, most of the towns our sites there, don't have their police electric departments, departments on their, their thing too, because it's a town. You know, it's not just it's electric. It's uh, the town road crew, the police department. Yeah, and they're just—I mean, they're just a little higher than we are. They're not a lot higher, but I guarantee you, they got a lot more employees. Right, right. So, but again, as you're looking at, it, if you come up with anything that you'd like to see, send me a note. I'll pull it up and and get that for you as well. But again, I just thought it was good information to see. It it, it kind of gives you a little picture. Thank you for bringing that forward. Ben. Sure. And if any of you want copies of the of those, I can you know okay. send them electronically as well. I would like that. Okay. Thank you. I guess it would be interesting to know if Hardwick is actually if, if that electric department because it is a town electric department whether that's in their salaries on that or not. It'd be a be an interesting question. I don't. You know, and my, take on, my take on it would be no, because I'd be considered private enterprise, kind of like our sewer and water. Because our sewer and water, you know, when you're looking yeah, that that would that's not on there. Yeah. No. So yeah. Be interested to know what how many employees that they could well the VLTC like, should put that out pretty quick. You would think. I, I I have access to the electronic report now. Yeah. So you have to sit through find out how many employees each town has. Yeah. Yep. That's it's not all calculated, but yes, I can. Is there another analog? 
Not really. No. Um, if you want to I mean, all these numbers compare to the demographics, we've got to go to someone with a lot more population than we have. We have to know where they came from. We're yeah. pretty unique. It's tough to make. Just yeah. by where we're located and what we have, we're, we're pretty unique for our population size. Anything else on this? Okay, let's go back to the planning grant resolution <laughs> budget. Be Sorry, okay. I just wanted to jump in before we leave this topic. Um, does the board have a preference um, for the next budget review? Um, it'll be at the next meeting. I'll put it on. Do you have any preference of who you'd like to see? Or highway, police, um, any particular order? Um, or do you want to have a long meeting and have me bring them both in? I the, just aim to it. One at a time? Okay. Okay. Well, the police should be fairly short. I mean, a lot of that's just all under contract anyway. Yeah. You know, short of there. But, yeah. Well, the police, the budget is mostly equipment. And, uh, uh, of course, there's no labor question. It's just the equipment and fees and I'm having a better understanding about this planning grant and stuff like that. I do want to make a motion to approve the 18000 for that out of the upper funds. I'm second. Any further discussion on it? Um, Possibly. So we're approving, giving them the permission to uh, to seek the grant, apply for it, yeah. apply for the grant with the understanding that we will we will decide in the future to grant to contribute the eighteen thousand, or we already are going to contribute the eighteen thousand if they get it. We can always take and resend. But I would say if we approve uh, the grant, then we are going in the one of the troubles here is is that the, the time frame, December first. And the other problem that I see is um, we don't have a clear idea of the of the economic development committee because we don't really have an active committee yet where we we're trying to locate was it two more members yeah and those would be the that committee would be the ones that would take in i'm assuming it would take and look at what berlin needs that's what I'm asking them, right? To to do an assessment, look at the facilities that we have. Uh, but if we if we do get the the two members, this is an excellent opportunity to give them a tool to work. With. Yes. Yeah. It'll help them. Yeah, to help them do, do the assessment. They'll have some. Yeah. Some is there any idea how long it's going to take the those uh, the folks to take and get their uh, Get their um, report ready. VLCT? No, no, no. no. The, the, oh, the, the development committee? Yeah, not a clue. I, I don't have a clue on the timing on that yet. I'm, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm asking. Was that? You're talking about the grant, right? How yeah. long it would take? Oh, the grant. Yeah, mm -hmm. if, if we approve this, oh, how long okay. would it take that study to happen? Because you you can have the study done and not have the committee. Right. It'd be nice to have the committee and the study, and the study the at the same time. time. Yeah, I'm trying I'm trying to get the, the committee together and up and going if I can get two more volunteers, right? And have this before the next budget season. Their their thoughts and recommendations before the next budget season. Yeah. So we can start planning on what we're gonna do because time's gonna go quick, right? We have an obligation to the new town center to have something over there in X number of years and that's gonna go by quick. Yeah. And you know, we have no idea yet what that's going to look like. 
And this money is for the infrastructure study to, to look at the buildings and stuff, correct? Yes, that's what the, the property that we have, the buildings that we have. And I'm also with the with the board's approval, um, you know, going to ask them to take a look at the fire department buildings as well uh, throughout this, because, you know, we've been talking a little bit about them coming on board as a municipality. If they do that, do we have any opportunities there um, without those properties as far as buildings and, and what we do as well? You know, maybe a public service facility. How um, how long will it take? Uh, do you have any a rough idea how long would it take the study to take place? No, I I, I don't at this point. Any idea when we start? <laughs> For me, as soon as I can get the economic development committee up and running, um, that Wayne's Wayne's ready to go on it. Yeah. Um, I need to talk to Roberta, and I'm you know Wayne's looking for people also if you know anybody interested and i need to ask roberta the same thing yeah i'm not talking about you. that's right is she your third person because she asked no me. actually the third person that that accepted is also on the planning committee now and that's uh theron lay sleeper i know pat mcdonald's interested in you know so if she's number number four i would say okay she's superb if you guys have any thoughts of, of people that might be interested, I'm happy to reach out to them. I won't. I won't give up your name and say that you recommended them. Necessary, <laughs> necessary in order to have the discussion for bringing the fire department on board. I know we've talked about it um, extensively. We've just never brought it all the way forward. Could that be done without being part of the study? Oh, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it, it's yeah. it's just again. You know, thinking forward, right? right? Planning. What do we look like 20 years from exactly. now? Five, 10, and 20 years from now mm -hmm. is the idea, right? What what does the foreseeable future look like? And will there be any more growth? Will we start to slow down based on you know what the what the they look at? I don't know. Right. So any other discussion on this? Those in favor? All right. Aye. 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 Motion carried. Um, so now we move on to what do we do with the fire department? People are being patient. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. That's Matthew Romeo from Brolin Fire. Um, each year, the um, U.S. Department of Homeland Security grants a big old pile of change to the Department of Public Safety uh, and local uh, entities, subdivisions, state government get to apply for that money. A certain percentage of it has to be passed through to local agencies. And um, normally the timeline for that grant is they open uh, the request for proposals in January-ish. And then they're usually due right around my birthday in March, which is the first week of March. They usually give us some conditional idea of whether or not we get the money or not in uh, around Independence Day, around 4th of July. And then we usually get a, uh, a sub-recipient grant agreement where we can spend money sometimes September, October. -ish. Then you have a year beyond that to, as part of your grant performance period. Um, so what would be released this January, we would start looking at actual uh, acquisition of things come October. Uh, you know, quite frankly, uh, that has been challenging the last couple of years because, you know, widgets that we get quotes on in January for $18,000 all of a sudden became $25,000 widgets by the time we got to when we could spend money last year. So it was a little, a little bit challenging. Um, this year, we've had a uh, kind of an unexpected uh, uh, re-release of money. They didn't spend all their money in a prior grant year. So they've got this undetermined chunk of money out there. I have some swags about uh, how much it might be but they want to get off the books. So things that the fire department has been looking at 
coming to y'all and talking about applying for in January, we'd like to apply for right now. And the way the grant functions um, after we go through all the paperwork and approvals and stuff is um, the we, we buy the widget and then we submit to Department of Public Safety for reimbursement. It's usually a 30, 45 day turnaround. So it's just, it's numbers on paper. And um, it's, you know, as long as we don't go out of our budget, there's no match or cost on our end um, as far as the ones that I've done at the state. Um, back to Vince's discussion about us becoming a town entity. Because we're not a town entity, we can't apply directly. So what I'm looking for tonight is basically the approval to apply for the town for the fire department. Um, in that, and I'm sorry you didn't come in earlier. I was going to catch you before the meeting and let you know that I was looking to do this because you have to have uh, basically someone that can sign on behalf of the town, which I assume would be us. And you also have to have a fiduciary, which I'm <laughs> looking at you. So um, it, we've done um, uh, three years. I've I've got a, about a half a million dollars worth of this done at my other job. So, um, it, you know, I keep a list of, list of things on the shelf. For us, what we're looking to do is the first item we're looking at replacing is our hazmat trailer. We are a one of the two uh, designated decontamination units for the state hazmat team in Central Vermont. The other is Barry City. Um, we the, that trailer that right now is sitting outside the Four Corners. We're about to move it down to Riverton for the winter. Uh, that has a full decon line. So the last time it got set up for real was during the uh, Chem Lab accident at Spalding High School. Uh, several years back, but there's two of them here in Central Vermont, and basically one of them would end up going to a scene. The other one usually ends up going to the hospital, which is why we have one, and they get re-cleaned on the way in. All of our firefighters that go through Firefighter 1 also get the hazmat operations and technical, technical decontamination training to do that. Uh, we deployed it uh, twice last year, I think, or three, three, three times. Three times. Excuse me, three times. Once to Northfield, once to Williamstown, and uh, once to the East Montpelier, Montpelier border on Town Hill. Um, so it, it is a regional asset. It does it does get used. Um, and that trailer is knocking on 20 years old. Um, it's okay, but it's, you know, in that in that time to time to replace it, we probably need one that's a little bit bigger. And I'm also looking to try to uh, add some specialized equipment in there that would help us if we ever have to uh, evacuate a nursing home. I'll never want to do that again. Um, but there's always the possibility. So we're looking at some items that we can put in there that would make us a little better suited to deal with that. Second big item that we're looking to apply for this year is a utility truck. Uh, three quarter ton or one ton pickup uh, to pull that trailer. Um, we currently have one. It's a 2011. We're we're not going to replace it. We're looking at one in addition. We've been in discussions with um, agency transportation, the rail division, and with the state hazmat team. One of the vulnerabilities we have coming through the town of Berlin is the rail railroad. Um, we end up having to put people down the tracks a couple to a half dozen times a year, usually down in Riverton for, and quite frankly, usually get somebody out of the river. Um, but it's it's a tough thing to put, we should not be putting vehicles down the railroad tracks that are not designed to do that. So we're looking at picking up a utility truck that also has that Highline kit on it. Uh, we're working with the guys from VTrans to get the specs right and everything. So they, they order a half a dozen of them a year so we're just going off of their specification package. So that would do a couple of things. One, it would give us another vehicle to pull that hazmat trailer. Our utility was down in the shop for a week, uh, just here lately. Um, and it would give us something to actually tackle those, um, those rail incidents. When I pitched that idea to the state hazmat chief, it was like, 
I can't believe no one's done this before. So he was, you know, he thought it was a great idea. So they are on board back in both of those uh, applications. The last thing we were going to try to put in for this year, they've one of, one of the rare occasions they've opened up radios on the grant this year. Um, we don't usually see that. That's usually they because uh, they don't want to they don't want to get people uh, filling their daily operational needs off the Homeland Security grant. It's got to have some nexus to supporting a response to terrorism or weapons of mass destruction or, or bad things happening. So, uh, but we are going to look, try to uh, pick up a few of the more expensive radios. They're about five grand a pop, uh, but it allows us to uh, operate in uh, multiple uh, frequencies and environments um, for what we do. Um, it's no impact on the town budget other than our our hours. So um, that deadline is a week from Friday, which is why I got added to the agenda tonight to ask y'all uh, for that authorization. Um, so that's that's kind of my pitch. What what we if we if we're not going to get everything we asked for off of this mid-cycle grant. Whatever we don't get off of this mid-cycle grant, I'd like to just take that application and roll that right over into January's uh, request for proposals. That was my question for you. So this mid-cycle grant won't impact our regularly scheduled. You had a, a nice regimented schedule of how it, the grant application usually works. You don't think that will affect that regular schedule no. request from the Homeland Security Board. Not at all, uh, because this is spending old money that they're basically they're trying to get off the books. This particular uh, grant cycle, I didn't want to do this off of memory. I know the regular one because it's just it's like routine every year. But the applications are due December 9th. Okay, I may have gotten my dates wrong. I thought it was a week probably. Might be two weeks from Friday. So again, it's no cost to the town. We just have to help you with a grant application. It won't affect the future grant. I think you might have oversold it. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Because I think we're all ready to jump on board with this. For yeah. You. So I mean, we'll 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 be able to off of this mid cycle. We'd be able to spend money in February. That's yeah. two weeks. Yeah. So I'd like to make a motion that uh, <laughs> they approve the request to help uh, facilitate the grant. Uh, application. I second that motion. Any discussion? I do have a question. Okay. Uh, who does make the payment? Let's say you get radios, for instance. Yep. And I know in a sub recipient type situation, you have to pay in advance. You do. Okay. So is it the town that would the, make the payment? The town would cut a check and okay. then, and then okay. we submit a, so we have to submit a request for reimbursement. Mm -hmm. So, like if, if you wrote a check today, I'd have till the end of the month of December. Mm -hmm to submit for reimbursement. Right. Yeah. And the biggest holdup I've found in doing reimbursements in my other job is getting a copy of a canceled check. Okay, I have no it, issue with that. It, well, it's, no, I, 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 I know, time. but it's just, it's like so odd. It's like, wait a minute, who puts checks in for? But they have to have a, getting them out of the state system is difficult. So. I yep. do understand that process. I just sure. wanted to make know what my role in life. absolutely yep you'd have to you'd have to make sure i don't you know buy front the money yeah <laughs> you front the money so usually for about 45 days right. any other discussion all those in favor aye. Aye. aye motion carries thank you very much thank you um entertainment Catering. Oh, the catering. Yes, I gave you all my copies. I don't have a copy of it. Get one? It was too nice. So again, it's, it's all electronic now. This is what Rachel's providing me. So what we're going to do in the future is we're just going to take an excerpt from this and I'll put it on a Word document just to say what it is. So Caledonia Spirits cater permit for the date of the event on December 10th, which is at the Capital City Grange for a private birthday party. Is that because it's a liquor? Liquor is being served? Is that what yeah. the whole purpose behind That's it? the whole purpose. 
I make the motion to approve the permit as presented by Vince and include that it's uh, three o'clock to five o'clock on December 10th. Yes. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Carries? Um, let's see here. Approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. I have that here. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 23-10S for payroll from July 1 to September 30th, 2022. It's a failed police union contract in the amount of $16,738.26 paid on November 10th of this year. Also payroll warrant 23-11 for payroll from November 6th to November 19th of this year, paid on November 23rd, also this year in the amount of $58,472.05. Payable warrant 23-G09 with checks 22-444 to 22-502 for payables in the amount of $94,091.90. Any further discussion? Not on this one. I just want to remind you the fire department has one more issue to cover. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And the fire department again? Um, so a while back, we, we approved um, the purchase of radios, the upgrade for PD and highway crew. And in doing so, you're changing your Changing uh, the ability for emergency management for communicating with any of those entities. Um, since then, I've had uh, one of my people reach out to Burlington Communication, who is the same um, company of which the town has gone with, to uh, upgrade the, ba the base radio, both in Riverton and Four Corners. Um, so they would then have the ability to communicate freely with the, the road crew or PD in the case of, and let's me back up. So um, the fire station is in uh, the EOC, so Mercy Operations Center. And that is where um, Mercy Management would set up shop, basically, um, and communicate with whatever we, we have, might have going on as far as um, flooding or, I don't know, weather related, any anything that's going to affect the town. Um, so there is an estimate uh, for the two, two base radios and two portables. So the portable would be, you'd have one radio right now that the fire department could communicate directly with um, the EOC, either at the base or remotely. Um, and that's a total of $29,437.14. Of course, this estimate was put together in July 18th of this year. Um, my understanding is that that's still a good number. I just had one, had my guy check on that a couple of weeks back. Um, when I was talking with at the last emergency management meeting, uh, I'm kind of surprised we don't have him here today. Uh, they were going to come and talk in favor of Bruce is online. Bruce is online. Nice. I, I'm here. Can you hear me? I can. Yes. Good evening, Bruce. Good evening. Um, yes, uh, as Chief Staub said, um, this was something that was discussed, and uh, I'm not the radio expert for the emergency management team. That would be uh, Tour Nelson, but I did uh, talk with Tour after our meeting, and uh, he says that it totally, of course, makes sense that the fire um, department be able to communicate with the rest of the uh, uh, town departments that would be most involved during an emergency and um, that this would be a, a big uh, upgrade 
as far as what the emergency operations center would be able to um, to to communicate out with. Um, in the past, during uh, some of the bigger emergencies that we've had, like uh, Irene and Sandy, there was um, any communications with the people in the field all had to go through the fire department radio. So they had to have somebody at the fire department uh, manning those, and then they would take the message and bring it down to the um, emergency uh, operations center room. So that, that does, you know, it works. It's not ideal, and uh, this would give a, a great, uh, I think, a, a definite improvement there as far as uh, getting in information in a timely manner. So uh, we did want to say we support this and um, think that it would be a, a good uh, addition for uh, capability of the town. Some radio questions. I know we just approved a radio upgrade for the fire department, didn't we? Where we bought the radios or highway and police. Highway and police only. And, and in that quote also, well, it's not quote anymore, it's uh, done. Uh, we also get up on the tower up here so that they have will have access, won't have dead spots on the other side of town. And, you know. So yeah. Uh, this this isn't anything that's included. Potential uh, homeland security grant that we're immediately uh, uh, applying for. The only thing that might be included in there is, is two portables, um, and and that is something. If that's on the tail end of you know what we're really looking for, looking for the trailer, looking for a truck with the higher, you know, the, the high rise pack, whatever that goes with that, so it can go off rail. Um, the radios is, is kind of like an added thing. Um, with the presentation that we had from Barry City uh, Chief Allsworth, they will have, um, we're going to have the ability to order radios. Um, they're going to freeze the cost of those radios for two years. So what we don't get um with the grant, we're still going to end up having to purchase it. We'll have two years, and I'm going to say um, in the next 12 months, it'll start at two years. Um, but decent. that is not, that's not the base. The base radio is really the, the more expensive. Are these radios uh, ARPA? Yeah. 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 On it, ARPA worthy. I don't know. ARPA worthy. They're ARPA, ARPA worthy. Yes. And if you do these radios, I mean, life expectancy, these are for expected to last a long time. So it's something. It depends on um, how well they're taken care of and, and everything else. But yeah, you're looking at probably anywhere from ten years. six to 10. Yeah. Pretty much the same with any uh, any of the technology. So where does this come in? I mean, the fire department has a budget already. Is this something supplemental to the budget that uh, was already approved for this year's purchases? Or no, this is an addition. Yeah, addition. This purchasing these radios just cuts out a two-step process that you've been using in the past, and it's just a one-step process to be able to communicate to me. Fire department, the other right. The only question that I have is just about the price is subject to change after 90 days. And they had yeah. voted on July. So that price is still good right now. Great. Right. You know, it's much like uh, I think we ended up sitting on ours for 45 days. Ours? Yeah. yeah. The, oh, no, it was longer than that. Yeah, it was quite a long time. Yeah. Yeah. But I called them as well to get an extension on the price if they would hold it. 
Yeah, as we and they were the process. Process. Yeah, they were they were fine. I mean, they paid the payback was <laughs> they're making us wait a long time to get their FC get our FCC license and the, and the radios in stock because they're still not in stock. No, that's yeah. not unique to us. No, it's not. It's everywhere. It's a, it's so there's a an, an A and a B line and and don't I, I can't quote this, but we are so close to Canada that any frequency change or anything like that has to be signed off by Canadian officials as well. And it's like sometimes when the wind blows just right, you'll hear taxis on the cap on our our frequency. But there's there's that and then uh I think the judiciary department waited nine months on radios that used to be on the shelf this year. Yeah. When does this have to be voted on? This one? Yeah. Depends on how long they're going to hold the, the quote, for, right? Mm -hmm. My only thing is that uh, monetary items have to be awarded. And we added this on tonight. Yeah. So I can put it. Sorry to use this as a discussion. Can this wait till? The next meeting? Yeah, I'll put it on the next meeting for a moment. Sure. Thank you. That would be Thank you both. Uh, approval of November 7th, 2022 minutes. I make the motion to approve the Monday, November 7th, 2022 minutes. Not in terms of content, but just grammatical issues, changes, you know, spelling, names, things of that nature. And I've made no patience for you yet. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Any other discussion on this? You can get a flower red pack. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, other than that, um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, round table, Joe. Uh, yeah, so the, the fire department is still actively looking um, for another member for the board of directors, and it's actually appointed by the select board. Um, Jerry Diamantes was our last member, and he stepped down to work um, a little more diligently with the CD fiber. Um, so I'm just uh, putting it out there, looking for volunteers. This is for, this is the member from the public, right? Yeah, it would be a, a yeah somebody a resident who is not uh, a member of the fire. Anything else? Well, I do not have anything. Thank you, Carol. I just like to say we're pretty. Fortunate here in Berlin. I, I talked about our volunteers at uh, the meeting we had at the Grange, but we're lucky to have a, a dedicated and knowledgeable chief and fire chief. So thank you. Both. Yeah, kudos. Hey, Vince? No. Oh. <laughs> and he's smiling when he says that. Anything on uh, executive session? Not tonight. Entertain a motion to adjourn. I make the motion to adjourn tonight's regularly scheduled select board meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Vince. Yes, Mr. Delcor. Could you forward me the budget materials? I thought they'd be in the packet, but it sounds like you'd provided them earlier. I did. Okay. If you could do that, that'd be great. Yes, sir. I can Thanks do that. So Have a good night. You too. You too.